Hey there, my name is Chris, better known as Signs of Life, and I'm an ambient music and chill ambient music producer from the Bay Area in California. And like you, I'm a huge fan of Stepic. Not only is it extremely powerful, but it provides me with the versatility and flexibility to create any sequence I can possibly imagine. Stepic has been at the centerpiece of my workflow for several years now, and it's helped me create better music than ever before. The thing is, while there are several videos out there explaining what Stepic can do on a technical level, we felt that there needs to be a video series where Stepic is shown in a real-world scenario so you can get hands-on and learn how to use Stepic in a practical sense. That being said, it's my honor to welcome you to this Meister class where we provide users with insights and practical applications around Stepic to motivate and inspire you to apply what you've learned in your own musical productions. In this Meister class, I'm gonna construct a chill ambient track from scratch using only Stepic and the free synthesizer Vital so you can follow along and build the track step by step. To make it easier to follow along, you can also download all of the presets that I'm using in the link down below this video, so be sure and download the presets and install the latest version of Vital before we begin. That being said, let's get into the video, Stepic Chill Ambient Meister class. Enjoy. In today's video, we're gonna build a chill ambient track from scratch using Stepic and Vital. Now keep in mind, I am using Ableton Live here. You can feel free to follow along in any other DAW of your choice, uh, but be sure to have Stepic and Vital updated to the latest version of each, and also make sure to install the required Vital presets before we begin. So I've got a tutorial planned out here. What we're gonna do is I have a PowerPoint that we're gonna refer back to to give us some structure. Um, the idea of this video is to learn Stepic in a more comprehensive way and give you guys a better understanding. And not only that, how to build a chill ambient track from scratch using, again, Stepic and Vital. So let's go to the PowerPoint here. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a pad. And we're gonna use Stepic's chord sequencer with long sustained notes to build up a nice chord progression, all right? So let's go back to the DAW here. The first thing I'm gonna do is adjust my tempo to 101 beats per minute. So just go ahead and put 101 in your tempo. And I'm gonna play in D minor here today, all right? So I've adjusted my scale on my push. Now what I'm gonna do is grab an instance of Stepic and Vital. Now, again, I'm using Ableton Live here, so I'm using the Max for Live version of Stepic. Um, if you're using the VST, that's totally fine, or another DAW, no worries. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up a preset. Uh, these presets come included with this Meister class. So I'm gonna load up Rising Star, this is a pad here. And I'm also going to call up Stepic. Now, with my chord sequences, what I like to do is I like to keep them nice and simple uh, and not use all of Stepic's 16 steps. So I'm gonna change the root note here at the top to D3. I'm also gonna change the scale to natural minor. And then I'm gonna change the steps from 16 steps all the way down to four steps, all right? Now for the note length, what I'm gonna do instead of one over 16, I'm gonna change this to custom and we're gonna use four over one. That's four whole notes, okay? Now you can see Stepix chord sequencer right here on the bottom. Now what's interesting about this is that all of these red notes are out of scale, right? Or out of key and all of the black notes are in key. So what we can do is we can start penciling in some chords. This is a D minor chord right here. And we can go on to the next one and we can pencil in another chord. This is a D sus two, right? And you can just actually go really random with this. It doesn't really, you know, it doesn't have too much effect on the sound because they're all in key anyway. And that's what's really cool about Stepix chord sequencer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give you like one more here. There we go. That's looking good. That should be fine. All right, so now what we can do is, in the latest version of Stepic, they added a preview button. So what we can do is just hold down this little uh, speaker icon, and you can hear that we're now previewing each chord and each step. So you can hear what it's gonna sound like before we even start sequencing. That's quite nice. I like that. Great, so if you're happy with that, cool, we can get on to sequencing. Now, we don't need to change any of the steps, uh, but what we can do is change the randomness. Now, this is the activate random step play order button right here, and there's either off, green, or purple. I like purple because that makes sure that no step two steps are gonna repeat back to back. So I'm gonna leave that on purple. I'm also gonna change the um, 
octave sliders here, one to plus one, and then activate the purple dice again. So sometimes our chords are gonna be an octave up. Um, you don't really need to change anything else here. Now that we've set it to four over one, we have four steps. This is pretty good. So what we can do is just go ahead and hit play and you're gonna hear that we're gonna start sequencing some chords. It's gonna be almost generative. That's quite nice, right? So what we're doing is we're laying down a foundation here for the rest of our track. Go ahead and lower the volume a little bit. That's quite nice. Now, if I was to drag out the MIDI here, it would come in as random, right? Because I've already set this as a random step play order, right? Um, which is interesting to me because, you know, when we do get to arrangement, you might want to do that. You might want to drag 16 bars of MIDI out and then it would have a nice random chord sequence all the way across your track. Uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, what we're going to do is just leave it in sort of a, you know, random play mode. And we can sort of play on top of that until it's time to get to arrangement, which we're going to cover later. So that's Stepix Chord Sequencer. All in all, it's a really powerful system. Um, all you have to do is activate the chord button here at the bottom, pencil in some chord notes, and uh, yeah, you're in business. So anyway, let's move on to sequences and bass. Now that we've got the foundation for our track established, it's time to move on to some sequences and some bass. And for that, what we're gonna do is we're going to create some sequence and bass layers that are deep and supportive layers that don't overpower or take too much away from the pad. So let's go back to the tutorial here. First thing I'm gonna do is rename our tracks. So this is gonna be called pad one, and then we'll rename the next one sequence one. You can feel free to name uh, the tracks whatever you like. So we're gonna grab another instance of Stepic here and I'll grab another instance of Vital. Now for the Vital patch, what we're gonna do is load up a patch called Focused Light, okay? And we're gonna go back into Stepic and do what I call just some, some light sequencing, right? And what we're gonna do is switch it again to D3 and then Natural Minor. Now what I like to do for these sequences is make them rather straight. So I'm not gonna do too much random sequencing and you'll see what I mean in just a second. So I'm gonna take the steps and lower the steps down to eight and then I'll change the note length to one over eight. This gives us a nice tight foundation uh, to build our sequence on top of. So being that we're already in D natural minor here, what we're gonna do is change the third step to a G and change the sixth step to an A. Now you can go through and we have these preview buttons over here so you can hear, right, all the notes in D minor before you actually get into some sequencing. These are really nice if you wanna preview the notes, if you just wanna hear what each step sounds like, you can do it right over here. These speaker icons will show up on the left. So what we're gonna do is come over to the octaves and we're gonna raise the next, the last one plus one. And I'm gonna put that in random step play order, meaning that this sequence is gonna play linearly. Um, however, every once in a while, it's gonna change to plus one or each one of those notes is gonna be an octave higher. We're also gonna randomize the velocity because Focus Light has randomized velocity built in. So what we're gonna do is hit the random dice over here and just kind of randomize our velocity, but make sure that it doesn't actually hit zero because if it hits zero, you're not gonna be able to hear it. So this is fine. And what we'll do is randomize the step play order again with the purple dice. That should be good, okay? So we've already set this up and let's go ahead and hit play here. And you're gonna hear that we have a sequence playing over the top of our existing pads. That's quite nice. Right? And the reason why this sounds the way it sounds is because again, the sequence is playing straight across. However, the octave sliders are creating a ratio. So maybe only one out of eight is one octave up, but that still doesn't change the play order here, which is something I do a lot in my own music. So that's great. Um, the preset sounds good, everything sounds good. Now, 
what we're gonna do is we're finally going to start doing some automation here. Now, again, I'm using Ableton Live here. I'm also using the Max for Live version of Stepic. So your mileage may vary. So I, I urge you to consult your DAW on how to use automation, especially with Stepic here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to hit the configure button right here in the, in the vital, and we're going to hit wave shape. Now, what this is gonna do, it's gonna give us a modulatable macro here. Each of the presets that I provided you has four assignable macros, which is quite nice. Now, over here in Stepic, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to the Automation tab. This allows us to automate any parameter inside of Ableton Live or any other DAW uh, right from Stepic. It's really cool. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the automation lane by hitting the number right here, number one, and we're gonna hit Map. Now it gives us 20 seconds to go find that macro slot that we already assigned earlier. So what we're gonna do is come over here and touch this little triangle right here underneath macro one. And now you can see that back in Stepic, we have now assigned macro one in Vital. Uh, the track is sequence one and we're good to go. Now, you may not know this, but in the settings of Stepic, you have the random octave range, random duration range. You can set ranges right here in the settings. And that's really, really helpful. In the automation lane, however, you have the minimum and maximum settings right here for you. So these knobs really do help. So what we can do is change the maximum down to like, I don't know, 45, 50, something like that, right? And then we can randomize it. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna give us a range of randomization. Rather than having it go all the way to 127, it's gonna give us a nice range um, that it's gonna randomize as we modulate. Now, what we can also do, instead of having it the sequence speed here, we can change this to whole notes. That gives us a little more time before things start changing and a couple more notes can play in between. So let's go ahead and play this and hear what it sounds like with our new automation intact. Check it out. see that macro is moving right here. So that really does provide some character to our patches. And now that we've done that in Stepic, it's even cooler, right? So again, using Stepic's automation feature, the minimum and maximum, we adjusted the speed here. All of this is an attest to how powerful Stepic actually is and what you can do with it. You're given eight automation lanes per Stepic instance. It's quite crazy. Anyway, this sounds great. And now that we've established this, it's time to move on and we'll start creating some bass. Now that we've got our track in motion, it's time to lay down some bass. So what I'd like to do is grab another instance of Stepic here and drag it over to our third track, along with another instance of Vital. And for the Vital preset, we're gonna load up Bass Halo. This is a really nice deep bass sound for our track. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over to Stepic and I'm gonna have you set the root note to D2 right here and the scale back to natural minor. Now we're also gonna change the note length to one over eight, all right? Now you can see on the top of each individual step in Stepic Step Sequencer that there's a button that says on that has three states. It's either on, connected or continuous or off. We're gonna change the first one to on and hold shift and change the next one to connected and move our mouse to the right. All over Stepic's, you know, step sequencer and other parts of Stepic, you'll see that you can hold shift and really just make your life a lot easier by holding shift and as quickly adjusting all the steps in the sequence. So we're gonna leave number seven is on. We're gonna connect that to number eight. Leave number nine is on, hold shift again and press connected and then leave our mouse held and move our mouse to the right. So now we have all of those connected. So we have 10 through 16 are connected. Now you could hit play right here and this is gonna actually make a D bass pattern that might be what you want. It actually sounds pretty good. Check this out. That's a solid bass pattern. I quite like that, but we're gonna take this one step further, right? This wouldn't be a Meister class without the extra step here. So what we're gonna do is start changing some of these notes and start chaining these patterns together uh, with the pattern sequencer up here on the top right. So let's go ahead and we're gonna change this seventh step to an F note. We're also gonna change the ninth step to an A sharp but we're gonna make it one octave lower. So this is gonna actually provide a little bit of variation to our bass, and you're gonna hear, as soon as I press play, it's gonna provide a nice little melody line. Check this out.
Right, so you can hear, stepping is not just for step sequences. I mean, you can make some really cool melodic lines just inside of stepping. Now, we're gonna take this another step and we're gonna say store and press number one here. We're also gonna say store and press number two. Now we have a copy of that initial sequence and we're working on number two here because this one is lit up. The reason why I did that is because I'm not gonna change the second pattern much, but I am going to change a couple things. So I'm gonna change the octave back to zero here. I'm also gonna change the note for the first step to G. I'm gonna make this seventh step connected and I'm gonna change the ninth step to A. All right, so now we have just sort of a two note sequence here that's gonna provide a nice counter melody to that initial sequence. Check this out. Now you may be wondering why, you know, we're only playing one sequence at a time because check this out. You have up here at the top right, the very top right of Stepic, you have a next pattern dialogue menu. And this one says same, but you can set it to next. I can also set pattern one to next, which means after pattern one is completed, it's gonna go on to the next pattern. And after two has completed, it's gonna go to the next pattern, which is again is pattern one. So now we're gonna alternate between patterns and it's just gonna continually go back and forth. Check this out to make a full bass line. That's extremely powerful stuff. So you can see that you can chain different patterns together. We have up to 16 different patterns. You can set which patterns go into which pattern. You can arrange these in your DAW. I mean, Stepix pattern sequencer is really, really powerful. So this is just a small example, but you know, for a baseline, this is a really good foundation and it's time for us to move on to the other parts of our track. So I'm happy with this. So now that our track is firmly established with our pad, sequence, and bass layers, it's time to move on to percussion. So for that, we're gonna create a glitch percussion layer and a kick layer. We're gonna use these layers to accent the original sequence while adding color and context to our track. So I'll show you what I mean here. First things first, let's go ahead and tidy up a little bit. We're gonna rename this track bass that we made before. And the next track we're gonna call it kick. And the next track we're gonna label this glitch or glitch percussion, all right? Cool. So. Um, let's go ahead and grab another instance of Stepic here and place it on the kick track. And we're gonna grab a synth and that's gonna be Vital. And for the Vital preset, we're gonna use our Perk Kick preset. Now, this has already been pitched and already tuned to a kick drum. So you don't need to change any of the notes inside of Stepic. But what I'd like to address your attention to is all of these notes here on the top, they also have a randomize button or this dice button. So what we can do is we can make some of these uh, connected and then we can also randomize some of these uh, while at the same time establishing where our notes are actually gonna fall. So as you remember on our bass track, we had notes one, seven, and nine, and that's where we had our big changes. So if those are always on, every note outside of that is gonna be sort of accent or ghost notes as they call it, right? So the, the dice means it has a 50% chance of playing or a 50% chance of not playing. So if I go ahead and hit play here, you're gonna hear that we have a nice, cool kick pattern that sometimes has extra notes in it and sometimes it actually sounds pretty linear. Check this out. Nice. 
so I encourage you to play around with this because you know you can really get creative on how fast those kick drums are happening or where they're happening. Uh, you might want to turn some of them off and just not have any kick drum entirely. It's up to you, right? But just you know, utilizing those randomization buttons for what they should be used for uh, is a really powerful feature in Stepic. So now let's move on to the glitch percussion track. And I'm gonna grab another instance of Stepic and drag it over to Glitch. And then we're also gonna grab another instance of Vital. Now the preset I'm gonna use here is the Perk Cyclical preset. Now this is a really interesting preset which creates glitch percussion really easily uh, through this wavetable that I've created here. Now what we're gonna do is come back to Stepic and Right off the bat, we're going to change this to D3, just to be safe, and natural minor, right? We're gonna randomize the entire sequence. We're gonna leave it in 16th notes, and we're gonna randomize it using this yellow dice button right over here. So we're gonna randomize the entire sequence until you're happy with it, that's good. And then what we're gonna do is create some ratios. And what I mean by this is we're gonna randomize the order of some of these extra uh, tabs down here, but at the same time, uh, it's gonna be, we're gonna, move some of the values around so they actually happen some of the time, creating a value ratio, right? So what we're gonna do is make a couple of these plus one, either two or three, and then randomize the play step order. That means that, you know, maybe, I don't know, 20% of the time it's gonna be an octave higher and the rest of the time it's gonna be straight up um, just in normal octave range. Now we're gonna do the same thing with velocity. We're going to randomize the velocity here and also randomize the direction, making sure that none of them hit zero. You can see that one of them actually hit zero. I'm gonna move that up a little bit. There we go, because our patch does have velocity sensitivity already built in. Now we're also gonna create a ratio on the divider here. So what we're gonna do is randomize the play step order with the purple dice and we're going to make one of them plus three and then two of three of them as two. And this is that ratcheting effect that makes glitch percussion really, really cool, right? So now that we've already done all this work here, all we have to do now is hit play and you're gonna hear that we have a nice, really, you know, like intense glitch percussion crack going along with our kick drum. Check this out. Oh yeah. Now, a couple more things to really take this to the next level. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna randomize the play step order of the actual step sequence. So now our notes are gonna be randomized. And what we're also gonna do is do the same automation trick that we did earlier and really start moving some of those macros in that glitch percussion patch. So we're gonna come over to the automation tab over here and we're gonna turn on three lanes of automation. Now, again, I'm using Ableton Live here, so the way I map this is I come over to Vital, and I hit Configure, and I'm gonna touch the Movement, the Drive Macro, and the Random Macro. So that's one, two, and four. And now you can see that I have macros one, two, and four available to be modulated, right? So I'm gonna come back over to Stepic, and I'm going to map these individually one by one. So I'm gonna hit Map, and I'm gonna touch the little triangle down here next to Macro 1. And as you can see, it's already mapped it. I'm gonna map again and map it to the triangle down here under macro two. And finally, I'm going to map the last macro down here, macro four. Now remember that we have this minimum and maximum value knobs right here, which is really handy, right? So on our first macro, uh, which is movement, we might not want that all the way. We might not want that only to like maybe Mm, how about 30, right? We'll go 30. And then on the maximum of the next one, we'll only have it maybe at like say 25. And then for the last one, we'll have it um, over here around 50, okay? And then you can randomize all of these values, okay? And what we can also do is leave it at the same speed that our sequence is going, because this is glitch percussion. We want this to be really fast and glitchy, and that's exactly what we're gonna get. Now you're gonna see as soon as I hit play, that all of those values are gonna change every single time we get a new drum hit. Check this out. You can see down here that our macros are moving along with Stepic, creating a really nice glitch percussion pattern. Oh, that's awesome. And that's one of the hallmarks of chill ambient music, right? Is that kick pattern, that bass, Glitch percussion. Oh, that's great. 
so now that we've established all these things, we now have a pad, we have a couple, we have a sequence, we have a bass, kick, glitch, percussion. It's time to move on to adding some final sequences and then moving on to arrangement. Now that we have our track firmly established, it's time to add a couple more elements before we move on to arrangement. So to do this, I'm gonna grab another instance of Stepic here, and I'm gonna drag that to our second to last track. I'm also gonna grab another instance of Vital, and the patch I'm gonna call up is called Ice Whispers here, and this is a lead patch. Now to drive this lead patch, we're gonna use an instance of Stepic, and I'm gonna do a couple things. The first thing I'm gonna do is switch this to D3 Natural Minor. I'm also gonna change the note length to whole notes. Because our lead patch has a really slow attack, uh, it's gonna take a little bit longer for the volume to rise in our patch. So this is good. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to randomize the entire sequence. Now, your mileage may vary. Go ahead and just find something that works for you, maybe some D notes in here. And we're gonna establish that, that looks good. And we're going to make another ratio here. This time we're gonna use four, maybe five octaves here that are plus one and go ahead and put that on the purple dice in the uh, step play order, right? Now, this is good. We can also put purple dice up here um, so our steps never repeat twice. And that's pretty much all we're gonna do. Because we've set this to whole notes, it's gonna take a little bit longer for these uh, lead sounds to come out. So check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here and you're gonna hear that it's gonna provide a nice little soaring melody over the top of our track. Check this out. all you need to really make a nice soaring lead over your track. I really like that. So we're letting the lead do the work and we're letting Stepic just drive the entire thing because it's set in scale, it sounds good every single time. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add one more sequence here. So I'm gonna grab another instance of Stepic and drag it to our last track. And it's gonna go right here. And we're gonna grab another instance of Vital. And what we're gonna do is we're going to load up a patch called To Infinity. All right, this is gonna be our sequence patch. Now these sequences that I've created here, this sequence in particular is just meant to hold down one key and let the sequence do the rest of the work. So what we're gonna do in Stepic is we're gonna set that up and we're gonna make this a D3, a natural minor. We're gonna leave the first one on and the rest of them are gonna be set to connected. So we're gonna just run our mouse all the way across and now we have one note. We're gonna change our note length to say a quarter and that's all we're gonna do. Now. Like last time, we're going to use the automation to really start moving this sequence around. One of the automations that I really like in this macro is this wave shape, okay? So we can, you can see that when I press the wave shape, some of these things happen, like there's different events that happen in the wave shape. So what we're gonna do is come back over to Stepic and we're going to activate the automation one and two. We're gonna use two lanes of automation here, all right? Now remember, to get automation in Ableton, what you're gonna do is hit configure and touch the macros or any part of the synth that you wanna, that you wanna modulate. We're gonna modulate the wave shape and the distortion. That's it. We're gonna leave the space and the filter for later, okay? So now that we've done that, what we're gonna do is come back over to Stepic and on our two automation lanes right here, we're gonna map this one to macro one and this one is gonna be mapped to macro three over here. Very good. Now remember that we have the minimum and maximum values here inside of Stepic. So what we're gonna do is set the maximum value of the wave shape to somewhere around 70 and the maximum value of the distortion around 45. That's looking good and we can randomize all of this, randomize as many steps as we like and we can leave um, this as like, maybe we'll set it on whole notes. That might be good to kind of give us some, you know, some delay time before the variation uh, happens. So let's go ahead and hit play here with everything in and see what this sounds like with our sequence, our lead patch and everything else that we created before it. Check it out. Space macro here. You can play with that filter if you want to. Either way. You got that beautiful lead sound. Good stuff. 
Now that we have all the parts of our track established, it's time to move on to overall arrangement. So for that, we're gonna talk about final details. The arrangement is crucial for getting this style of track right. Focus on building up new parts while maintaining your vision. Remove mini clips when necessary and keep building on things like storytelling and overall impact. You can do this, all right? So let's go back to the tutorial here. As you can see, I have fully arranged my track using Stepix MIDI drag and drop feature. Um, it's extremely powerful and super fast. So all you have to do is come over here to Stepix and just drag this button and just drag your MIDI right onto the timeline. And as you can see, I've done that for all of my tracks. So you can see we have that beautiful randomization in our sequences, that nice solid bass line. We have all that randomization in our kick drum. All these things that we established in the creation phase are all there in arrangement. So check this out. This is what this sounds like. And I'm really happy with that. You can see that I've left some gaps here for some contrast in between each of the MIDI clips. And uh, you know, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. However, it wouldn't be a Signs of Life Masterclass without that one more thing, that aha moment, right? So that's what we're gonna do right now. So what I'd like you to do is make a, one more MIDI track down here on the bottom and grab one more instance of Stepic and one more instance of Vital. Now the preset we're gonna call up on Vital is called Gateway Expansion. Now what we're gonna do is use Stepix MIDI Play feature to add that one more thing on top of the track to really take it to the next level. So let's go ahead and open up Stepic here and we're going to make it D3, natural minor, and we're gonna go ahead and randomize the sequence, okay? Just go ahead and randomize it to whatever you like. Uh, that looks good like that. We'll go ahead and just leave that like that. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and add some octaves here maybe hit the uh, randomized step play order with purple dice. We'll randomize the velocity as well and make that purple and that's pretty much good. Now, what I'd like to do is draw your attention to the MIDI play button right here. So what we're gonna do is turn on MIDI play by changing the note in mode to transpose. And that opens up a whole new set of options. So the note in scale transform, instead of chromatic, we're gonna say to nearest. And that's all we're gonna do. So what's gonna happen is, is when Stepic starts playing, it's gonna start playing uh, a randomized sequence, but our note playing is going to influence how that sequence actually sounds. And uh, you can go ahead and randomize the step play order here just to kind of take things to the next level. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and hit play and see what this sounds like now. <laughs> yes. So you can hear that these amazing randomized washes of sequence just really elevate what's happening underneath it. Oh my goodness, that sounds so good. <laughs> wow, so if you combine all this with the raw power of Stepic, hopefully this is giving you some insight on how to use Stepic in this style of track and this style of music and uh, maybe you learned a couple things. So anyway, my name is Chris from Signs of Life. I'd like to thank Device Meister for inviting me on here today. It's been a lot of fun and I enjoyed this Meister class. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box down below. And uh, I'll be back again soon with more Meister class tutorials just like this. In the meantime, take good care you guys and we'll see you guys in the next video.